Amari, I'm the Oak Witch, and today's video is going to be slightly different. I'm going to be doing a bookshelf tour, considering I've had some people on my Discord server ask for a witchy book tour to uh, show my collection, so I figured why not. It's going to be in a slight vlogging style, which will be slightly different to my usual content, so yeah, hope you enjoy. Before I get into uh, my book collection, I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, how to get books if you don't, can't really afford it. Because um, it's hard, books can be quite expensive sometimes, um, and ways in which you can obtain books for free legally um, are online websites like Sacred Text, Hermetic Library, Project Gutenberg. I also did a budget-friendly witchcraft video, which I'll link below or link in the card up there I think. Um, so yeah, just wanted to add that in here because books are lovely uh, but you know there are ways in which you can absorb information if you can't necessarily afford physical books. Okay, <laughs> one other thing I wanted to say is um, I don't necessarily endorse or recommend all of the books that I own. Um, there are some books on the shelf. I don't want to name and shame, but obviously I, I don't recommend everything that I have a physical copy of because part of, you know, reading and researching, sometimes you just buy a book and you end up not liking it and I don't necessarily sell my books, I just keep them. So anyway, just thought I'd add that in there. Uh, let's get into the video. So this is my um, herb shelf, I guess. Got some lovely... Oh, these books are absolutely stunning. Oh... I absolutely love these. I, I need to, I haven't actually read them yet, but they're absolutely lovely. Got um, some Corinne Boyer ones. I absolutely loved this book. So good. Treadwells. This was a fantastic book. This book was um, really hard to find, um, but, oh God, what a cool book. So you have the medic medicinal side here, and then you have the magic side here, and the... Uh, yeah, it's split in the middle, so very, very cool. And Troy books in general are just so lovely, so. Um, yeah, I got some Scott Cunningham and some ecological books here. And yeah, there's that. This shelf is uh, British, I guess. <laughs> it's my British shelf. Um, so a lot of Troy books here. I've uh, got some East Anglia ones here, um, Cornwall, um, obviously Gemma Gary, this, uh, I'm going to be doing a um, British folk magic book recommendations list, I'm going to be doing that video, um, and they'll be outside of the scope of this shelf as well, um, but this, in general, uh, is a really, really cool book. I love this book. So Graham King was a former owner of the um, Museum of Witchcraft and Magic that's in Cornwall, in Boss Castle. And that place is absolutely amazing. It's this place, actually. Um, Museum of Witchcraft and Magic. They gave me some booklets because they are absolutely lovely. Um, and yeah, so this book goes through charms and spells that... Uh, are in the museum and some other ones as well from uh, just British folklore and it's absolutely adorable. Love this book greatly. Um, yeah, just some other ones here. Currently going through this book. Um, recently, recently, like literally, like today, these arrived in the mail, and I am extremely hyped. Uh, you know what? I haven't actually read them, which is really, really terrible. Um. But, oh gosh, let me see if I can get this. There we go. Lovely signed books by Ronald Hutton, um, the author, obviously. And I'm really, really hyped to go for them. Oh, I'm excited for that. And then I got this book, which I found at a, um, a like secondhand sort of bookshop for quite cheap. Um, haven't gone through it yet, but I thought that was quite cool. So, next shelf uh, is kind of pagan, I think. Just pagan books. Um, some pagan books. I absolutely love this book. I talked about it in a recent video. That was really, really good. Um, 
absolutely love this book. This was like the first book that got me into heathenry, like Norse paganism, like properly. Um, yeah, really good book. Some others. Another Ronald Hutton. I've um, had that for a while. Uh, oh, I haven't read this yet, but I am excited to. Oh, look at this beautiful cover. Oh, how absolutely lovely. Another Troy Books uh, release. Same author who did the Walk Hunting Herbal book. Very, very cool. Um, my next shelf is uh, more witchcraft, I guess. Um, sort of, yeah. Um, got Wicca here. This book here, I actually, when I went to Cambridge, I found this, um, and it's a first edition Margaret Murray, um, and I got it for £35, um, which I thought was a pretty good, good find. Um, I mean, Margaret Murray is, but I just think how, you know, how cool, um, yeah, happy, and that's first edition, so how, how awesome, um, This is a great book. Uh like this one a lot as well. Um this is absolutely lovely. Oh, love this book a lot. Really I really recommend this. I think it still holds up today. Got to move quickly past the other one. <laughs> really liked this book actually. This is oh god, this is a stunning book. Like absolutely beautiful. It kind of feels like a magazine, you know, like that kind of vibes. Um really really stunning book i won't show too much um but really really lovely um devon hunter what else we got on here um i recommended these two to death <laughs> i've recommended this to death but you know it's good so and yeah i uh i recommended that in a recent video as well um not yet read this uh but I am really, really excited to. A lot of people say good things about it, so... Yes. And then my next shelf is... Um, I don't really know what to call this shelf. It kind of makes sense in my head. Uh, so from here to here, or sort of here, it's like signs, symbology... You know, I've got Sigil Witchery, which... Laura, I absolutely adore this book. And I'm glad that it's kind of in this format, obviously, because of, you know it being like a workbook um but on a shelf it just kind of <laughs> it doesn't really fit great on a shelf let's be real you know let's let's be real you know but anyway um got some icelandic magic uh runes because uh, this kind of goes through uh symbols a lot um like the staves um so I thought that would fit there. You know what, I can't put that back in, so I'm, that's, that's, that's staying out for a sec. Uh, yeah, some other runes books. i uh, got some symbols. You know, look, I... Okay, I recommended this in my beginner witchcraft book video, it, right? And it was poor uh, video making on my part. I should have googled it but oh my gosh i did not realize this is out of print now and they're selling this for 200 pound online like what i got this at like a waterstones near me you know that's where i got this book so I, here's me thinking that this oh yeah you know i got it at waterstones waterstones is basically barnes and noble right so i was like you know if i can find it there then surely you know it's it's widely sold but no it's like a rare book apparently um so if anyone's watched that video and wants a symbol book recommendation in replacement uh because i talk about how symbology is good to sort of have a basis on I recommend this which i'm pretty sure is still in print uh, i think i checked that um and it's essentially it's by the same author it is relatively similar um just a little bit less um probably a few less symbols but Generally, she covers quite a lot of the same stuff. Um, just a little bit less illustrated, I guess. Um, but still, still really good. Um, also, I recently purchased... Well, well, yeah, I guess this is a recent purchase. Um, I got this. It was a DK book. Um, and it goes through symbology. Um, 
and I would recommend this as well, honestly. I really, really like it. I've got I haven't run read through it like first page to last page, but I've gone through it. I've like used it as like a reference book. I've read a few bits here and there, and I really like the information. And I also just really like how uh pictorial is that the word? Just kind of infographic style, uh just pictures basically. <laughs> it's just got pictures and I really like it. The imagery is really nice and really lovely. So I do recommend this one as well if you're looking for a symbols book. Moving on. Um, correspondences. Oh, this is... Uh, I think if you're more advanced and you need something to just quickly d double check information and just off the top of your head, I recommend this. I think for a beginner, it's slightly... Uh, there's no context to any of the recommend uh correspondences there is no context at all like it's literally just these charts all the way throughout of the book but it covers like a great amount of stuff right it covers just pretty much anything you can think of um however there is no context really there's no you know background context historical context uh nothing so there is that and i would be a little bit wary of that if you're a beginner i can imagine sort of getting a book like this and then like not using anything else you know so you, i think you really have to sort of use this in tandem with other research that you're doing but absolutely amazing <laughs> if you need like a quick reference guide to get this book and that's llewellyn's book of correspondences by sandra kynes um and of course this is where i can't put it back in never mind um some spell books here, uh, Judica, Illes, uh, great, but this, I've said, I've spoken about this book before, this was pretty much like my first book, uh, well, not my first book, this is the, the first book that my mum ever showed me when she told me, me when I was really, really young that she was a witch, and then she showed me this book, and I was, my little kid heart was like, oh my gosh, my, like, <laughs> my dreams have been answered. Uh, I'll go through this stack. This is a oh, this is a random e-reader e that I've got. It's really old. Um, okay, this this stack is pretty much chaos. Um, another spell. God, just yeah. Let's not talk about that book. Um, <laughs> Brothers Grimm's uh, book. Um, all the tales. Some random random book. Honoring your ancestors. Still haven't read this. People recommend this all the time, and I still haven't. And I just need to. Um, Lovely. These two are absolutely amazing, as well as Jason Miller's book. Great, great set of books. Um, like the Candle Magic books as well. Both really good. Lilith Dorsey. I haven't. Oh, I haven't read this. I need to. Um, oh, this is a recent purchase as well. Gosh. Well, I say recent purchase. I pre-ordered it, and it only just got released. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm excited for this actually. It looks super cute using tarot in terms of your like spell work. You know, people always talk about tarot in terms of um, you know divination, of course, of course. Um, but I have used tarot in spell working before, and it's been absolutely fab. And I'm excited to see what Robin has to say. I uh, I'm hyped for this. And anyway, going on to these piles because oh. They're kind of in my door. <laughs> this is my um, mythology stack. Um, when I was growing up, my main interest um, or research topics I liked the most was mythology. I think that was just the pagan in me just completely going wild. Um, and I seem to have accumulated quite a few uh, different mythology books uh, nowadays i kind of just use sacred texts um yeah i just sort of go to the primary sources through sacred texts and online um legal websites but in terms of you know i, I like flicking through a book every now and then i'm going to be doing a um pagan beginner books recommendation video as well um and you know i'll discuss b books in more detail so i'm kind of just meant to be going through them very briefly in this video um but this kind of goes through this is by christopher dell and it kind of goes through um lots of different um kind of symbology within mythology um very very basic not really detailed at all doesn't talk about mythological tales for example 
you know, if you wanted something very, like, actual tales um, retold in a bit more of an understandable way, don't get this book. That's not what you'll get from this book. Um, oh, actually, I've got a Shinto book there. That's not meant to be there. Um, I got this, this, these two red books from Japan when I went in 2019. Absolutely amazing, by the way. <laughs> but, um, like, Japan is just completely amazing. Um, but I got these from Fushimi and Ari. Um, I got that from, like, a, a shop in one of the sort of stops along the trail of the temple and yeah i was very very happy to find them because i was looking for proper literature of shintoism and well shinto and uh yeah i guess like a japanese mythology type type uh book but i obviously <laughs> was trying to find it in english because i can't read japanese or speak japanese um and i managed to find one and I, hopefully they're good right uh but i haven't read them yet because, again, I am absolutely awful. Uh, but carry on. <laughs> Carrying on. Um, this was a... This is pretty basic. You know? Like, honestly, this, this Chinese mythology by Derek Walters, don't really recommend it. Not that good. Um, very, very basic. It's like an encyclopedia, basically. But very, very basic. Um, got a uh, lovely... I think the Dharmapada is there. Really? Can you see that? There you go. Really, really small. <laughs> um, really small book there. Um, where is my other... Oh, gosh. It's hiding. There it is. Um, yeah, I was really into Buddhism growing up. Um, Buddhism and Hinduism. I uh, studied it in school and then carried on that outside. Um, and it was actually like something I really, really considered for a while. I really, really loved... Specifically Theravada Buddhism, um, it really, really interested me. Um, and then when I went to Thailand and saw Theravada Buddhism in um, a non-Westernized context, it blew me away. It was uh, it was beautiful. Um, it's obviously not uh, a massive research interest of mine now. Very much more Norse paganism in terms of my actual uh, spiritual beliefs. Um, but... Buddhism as a research topic was always something that really interested me. Um, and I really like this book. I think this is quite nicely, uh, very simple and very uh, very nice, easy to understand. Um, moving on, because I keep talking too much about specific books. Uh, Joseph Campbell, Greek myths. I didn't quite like this, I'm going to be honest. I didn't really uh, enjoy this, um, this book that much. But anyway... Um, these are quite basic. Uh, I think I'd like to get some proper... Because people sort of lump Celtic all together. I think I'd like to get some proper literature. Um, but going over to my Norse section, because that's what I uh, am way more into. Um, Neil Gaiman. This was really, 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 really lovely. I think this is in terms of beginner approach to the uh, tales, to the Norse mythology... I think this is a good one to go for. Neil Gaiman is such a good writer, right? But I think he retells the myths in a really um, beginner-friendly manner. I think it's something that... Uh, I think he did a really beautiful job. Um, obviously, the Edders. Um, I absolutely love Jackson Crawford's Have em All. Um, this is a, just an absolutely stunning, stunning book. Um and the way he's sort of done the Old Norse and the English side by side. I just love it. Absolutely love it. But anyway, oh, this is another Christopher Dell book. Uh, same author as that. And this will give you a good idea. A lot of pictures, really beautiful imagery. Um, but when it comes to the text, it is very, very basic. So you're not going to... Maybe you'll learn, you know, it's, it's not... You need to do other research, basically. You know, can't really just stop here. But in terms of something to really look through and get, like, inspiration through the pictures, um, really, really lovely. Kind of like a coffee table book, if that makes sense. Again, I just keep talking way too much. Let's carry on. Let's let's chop, chop. Um, these are... Uh, these are just other herbal sort of crystal books that don't fit on my bookshelf. Um... What? Oh god, I actually I have to talk about this one. So this book, <laughs> this book, right? 
this specific book, this so Judy Hall was a very prolific crystal author. Uh, she wrote the Crystal Bible, and that's a really popular book. This specific book, I mean, I mean this version, this printing, is being sold online for eight hundred pounds. Like, what? I got this again at my local like Waterstones for twenty five quid. Like, however many years ago. All right, granted, it was a good few years ago now. But they're selling this online for 800 quid because apparently it's collectible. I'm just thinking, like, what? What? Um, Don't spend 800 quid on this book. <laughs> just don't do it. It's not It's just not worth it. Um, It's a lovely book, though. I just had to get that out of there because that really just shocked me to my core. Um... Really like this book, Herbal Medicine. I need to get more Herbal Medicine books, really. I need to do more reading on it. Um, but really like that book. Um, yeah, some crystal books. I've been asked for crystal book recommendations before. However, the books that I have, i.e., you know, this, uh, this lovely book I've had since I was a kid, you know, they don't print them anymore. <laughs> they don't sell them anymore. Well, they're really hard to find. Um, you know, this Cassandra Eason book, and I've got this one, this Cassandra Eason book as well. Um, this, well, actually, this one, this one's pretty, probably pretty easy to find, it's Scott Cunningham. Um, but, you know, they, they, I, you can't find these books, you just can't. Um, so, it, they're, uh, it's hard for me to recommend a book, because I don't want to recommend something that no one can find, right? Um, I had that issue with this one. But anyway, so... I can't really give you a recommendation. I, I recommend uh, Crystal Basics by Nicholas Pearson, and I'll do 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 put it here. Um, I really really like this book. I only read it through Scribd, and kind of reading these kind of like reading that kind of book is really hard um, on Scribd, like on on my phone. I much prefer going through books like these in person. Um, however, I actually really like that book. I've tried to go through most of it. Um, but that is one to potentially look at. And then the last few books which I'll talk about. Um, and these are like my history books, I guess. Um, lovely DK book here. Oh gosh, this is absolutely stunning. Um, I love this book a lot. And I'll, again with the... Oh, that's, I was trying to find that bookmark. <laughs> um, Again, with the pictures, however, I think the information here is actually quite good. I think the, um, you know, sufficient information, um, really lovely stuff in here. Um, and to be honest, the pictures for me really help when they're, when they're coincided with good information. It helps get a good picture of what they're talking about, like that context. And I think it's really, really useful. So I think DK has done it in a really good way. And this is a kind of similar layout to uh, the Signs and Symbols book, which um, I recommended by DK. It's a similar sort of thing where, you know, you get the information, but you get a lot of pictures to go in alongside it. Um, and I would say, you know, DK, I really kind of like what they're bringing out. Um, so yeah, I, I really recommend this if you wanted a history book on generally just, you know, magic throughout the ages. Because this one goes through let me get the let me get the dates right so I don't look like a fool. Um pre well, prehistory I guess to to now. Uh but it goes through I mean you can look at the contents here. Absolutely amazing. It covers just, you know, anything you can really think of. Um all up until Wicca, right? So, really, really amazing book. I really think they did a good job of this. Um, in terms of the other history books I have, I really liked this one, um, His Little History of Religion. Kind of lacking on the um, pagan part, very much world religions uh, focused. Um, still really interesting, still good to know, right? Um, but less of a witchy book, less of a pagan book. And then these two... Secret Teachers of All Ages, Manly P. Hall. Okay, I'm going to be very, very candid. I haven't read this yet. <laughs> I am building up to it because just wow. Wowza. Um, and then this one, which is a recent purchase. I got this alongside uh, Margaret Murray's God of the Witches. Um, 
And you know what? I just saw this and I thought it looked quite cool. Um, but yeah, those are my books. Um, those are those are everything, every physical book that I own. In terms of reading material, uh, I go a lot on um, sacred texts. I go a lot online on these legal websites, which I'll link below. Uh, I do a lot of my reading there because a lot of primary sources are there. Um, Scribd has been an absolute lifesaver, you know, in terms of... A affording these books um script has been amazing i've read a lot of material on there um you know i'll put a link i'll sort of take a picture and put here what i've been reading on script currently um so this is what i'm currently reading on script so one other thing i was stacking all the books again and i realized i have a bunch of these magazines which i figured i should show um and these are like witchy magazines so I uh, got this from Watkins and I got a whole bunch of Pagan Dawn magazines because I am subscribed to the Pagan Federation in the UK. And if you're subscribed to the UK Pagan Federation, you get a copy of each Pagan Dawn issue, which is their magazine. And yeah, it's gone, um, got some really uh, good content in here. I've got two copies of the same issue for some reason. Um, and just just to do a little little cheeky plug or not really a plug i guess but i wrote an article for uh, pagan dawn and crystal magic 101 and it was such a great experience i'm so uh lucky and grateful that i uh i managed to be able to write a article for them and it's just really awesome um very very happy there's me are we the oak witch woo <laughs> So yes, very very uh, uh happy about that. But in general, you know, that aside, I really do like the Pagan Dawn. And if you are in the UK, and you know, if you actually you can subscribe online and uh, get copies like digitally, so you don't actually have to be in the UK. Um, you know, it's like fourteen quid for a year, and you get all these. Uh, there's four issues a year, um, full of like you know famous famous authors um making like articles in here and really lovely people who contribute to this uh this magazine this um this whole thing so i really really recommend it um just really lovely but yeah those were my books i feel like i rambled for a while um <laughs> hope you enjoyed the video it's a bit different um it kind of feels weird just talking about myself for ages but anyway um i absolutely adore books as uh you can probably tell i will talk about them all day um hoarding books is hard and i know we put a lot of pressure to read books and to buy books obviously you want to support your authors and i'm just going to be really candid um book piracy is a really really bad issue problem in our community um you know it's everywhere it's absolutely everywhere but because our community is so small you, you think about our community our witchcraft pagan occult community we're so we're not mainstream we're so much smaller compared to other uh, book publishers, for example, book, book genres, whatever. So our publishers in our in our um, community are relatively smaller, even Llewellyn, right? Llewellyn is, com you know, probably one of our biggest ones, but they're still really small relative to other publishers. Uh, so in terms of the money that these wonderful authors... Um, make from their book sales it is nowhere near like the amount of money that you know any any author from more famous more uh more populous genres um make so you really have to uh think about whether or not you want to steal money from authors in that sense okay it is a controversial uh, take, I think, in terms of our community because there are so many people that are pirating books in our community, but it really hurts our authors. We're, we're essentially small businesses. You know, I, I say we're, I'm, I'm not an author, but like these authors are um, not making loads of money from their books anyway. Even the really popular authors, they're still not making a great amount of money. And by pirating books you are taking money from them and there's money that they deserve um you know there's a there's a video that megan from around the cauldron made and uh, she goes over it a bit more coherently than what i'm what i'm doing now uh but i'll link it below 
works. I think she explained it really, really well. Um, and buy books, basically. Uh, but if you can't afford books, please just go to your library. Uh, get Overdrive. Get a library card. You know, you can apply for a library card online most time. Um, and get something like Overdrive or Libby or uh, Sora. You know, there's lots of these apps which use your library card and you can use that to access ebooks. Uh, and you can get like an app on your phone. Or you can get an app on some e-readers. Some I think you can even get get it online on like a PC. You can get scribbed online on your PC. Uh, so I think there are ways in which you can still read literature, still support authors, and still, you know, not pirate <laughs> books and read for free if you really, really uh, needed to. So just putting that out there. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed my collection. Was there any books that did out to you is there anything which you like that you saw <laughs> i don't know if you like this type of video please let me know um i kind of feel a bit weird making it but people asked for it so uh i figured why not um and yeah i hope you're having a lovely day or evening whenever you're watching and i'll see you in the next one bye